YouTube on this one. Hi, YouTube. Hi, welcome on in. Sorry, apologies if this is a little late. I'm not going to lie to you guys. The storm took out my power and a lot of stuff in the area that I live. I live out in the middle of nowhere in the desert. And I just want to start off by saying, hi, YouTube. I hope you're doing well. Literally, my power was off for almost 12 hours on Sunday, so I couldn't stream. It would come and go. It was a nightmare, and then work starts up and all of that stuff. Uh, but I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to go ahead and go into this. I stayed away from all spoilers. Now, I do know, I do know, uh, I, I do know that Anime News Network and some other people were having a meltdown on X or Twitter uh, over this episode. I don't know why. I've stayed away from all spoilers, all everything. I just know that people were having a meltdown over this episode. And now I'm kind of curious. How bad is it? <laughs> on a scale of 1 to 10, how bad is it? This is the Rudy episode. This is like pretty bad. Uh, on a break, March comes in like a lion season two. Uh, no, there, we do have other shows that are going to replace seasonals that are going to replace the seasonal. By saying, it, I really did. I really did. I needed at least I needed Rudius in my life here to uh, get rid of the storm that came on by. Last two episodes on God hate from. Sometimes I wonder. Uh, this might be me. This might be a controversial take. I honestly, you, you can come for me. I don't care. I wonder if some people. Like, love to hate on this show because maybe there's aspects in the show that they're, they see themselves or they project themselves onto that they're not comfortable addressing. So they'd rather go ahead and shame everyone else who sees those aspects and notices, like, you know what, I've been through this, I've been through aspects of change or whatever. And for them, it's like, no, you're weird, you're this. And it's like all of this hate that's like redirected to it, right? Like, some sort of projection or anything through that. And, and, and I wonder, because, like, if we talk about the psychological depth of, like, Isekai, or, like, in, just in general anime, Moshiko Tensei is really fucking deep. Like, I'm still working my way through Volume 1, right? And I'm like, holy shit, this is deep. Like, I, I've been, like, you know, anime-wise, we've gone through, like, these seasons together, and I'm like, dude, this is really fucking deep. This is, like, you know, like... A lot of people, like, I, I think if you're, if you're just in it to find something to, like, yell at, you can, of course. But, like, if you take it in for what it's worth in the psychological journey and you try and break down the themes that are provided, man, there's a lot to break down. I mean, Rudy was just seeing if it, it, wait, what? He trolled him pretty well. Wait, who did? Wait, what? Managed to use a shit translation. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> but, no. Like my my number one thing is just being open to what whatever the show has to, has to like has to say you know like whatever the show has to show us and whatever the show has to be there for it right. With that being said, guys, we're gonna jump into it. I did find some really really interesting studies, and I'm not sure whether to start this episode off from that. In case you guys don't know, yes, I am a psychologist, and yes, uh, I I do. Hold on. I do start off, like, you know, even past streaming, I, I'm co constantly working, whether it's working at school, like, at, on my school, at work, at whatever. I'm constantly reading research articles, and I found a couple that I thought were really interesting on, like, as, as when it comes to ED and hypersexualization or sexual or how trauma can lead into hypersexualization and sexual deviance. And like, I found a couple articles on that and I'm like, should we start off with that or should we just jump straight into the episode and then I bring it up at the end? What do you guys think? Do you guys want me to go ahead and highlight at least like one or two sentences that these things play out and like see if maybe any of this ever plays out in like any of Moshko Tensei at, at like future episodes later and then we, we jump straight into it? Because I I found them super fascinating in regards to Rudius. Yeah, in regards to Rudius and just everything in here in general. What's up, Kurt Kong? How you doing? Appreciate it. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. So I'll, I'll start off with this, right? Either is good. I have, fuck it. If we're doing either, let me just jump into it. I think today the nah, I'm gonna start off with the with with the actual aspects of this, right? So there's been a couple of studies, a couple of key studies that I genuinely found really, really interesting. So here we go. So this one is by NCBI, you know, the National Library of Medicine. 
Uh, you can find a lot of good articles, especially APA articles on this, right? Super duper important. I like to bring this up because I want to go ahead and let me let me go to face cam. I want to go ahead and naturalize, hey, sexual trauma is real trauma. And the more that people fucking like play it down and make fun of it and oh, Rudy can't get his little pecker up. People fail to realize the consequences that some of these actions might take and that previous abuse might have on a person's mental state. So going into that, the role of childhood trauma, psychological problems and coping development of deviant sexual fantasies and sexual offenders, offenders, whatnot. Going into this, one of the biggest pieces in here that I found, and I even highlighted this, right, is like th there's evidence that early traumatic experiences, especially child sexual abuse or, or any form of abuse, really, may result in later psychiatric disorders or pain painful mental states, which in turn, the absence of more effective coping mechanisms or strategies may lead to the use of deviant sexual fantasies as a way of temporarily avoiding, interrupting, or reducing painful abuse-related mental statuses or psychiatric systems here's another one uh sexual violence and trauma in childhood a case report based on sh strategic counseling let's go all the way down in case you ever if case no one has ever taught you how to actually look at a research paper you can read the abstract and go down to the conclusion right overall what this found was a connection between you know childhood abuse and the development of compulsive sexual behavior bdsm practices so on and so forth any good psychologist and sexologist will bring out aspects like this which is childhood trauma major childhood trauma will bring out some form of sexual deviance either hyposexuality or hypersexuality right and in case you guys are like no what are you bro that, that's two that's two out of how many oh okay sexual dysfunctions and problematic sexuality and personality disorders and pathological personality traits all right let's go down to the conclusion again blah 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 conclusion the presence of either a pathological trait or you know personality disorder increases the likelihood likelihood of experiencing sexual and behavioral symptoms i.e hyper or hyposexuality erectile dysfunction boredom and hypersexuality among couple men this is a study done in European countries. Let's go to the conclusion. In some men, hypersexual behavior may serve as a coping mechanism for sexual fantasy, poverty, associated boredom, in association with erectile dysfunction. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pointing all of this out just to showcase, hey, this is all stuff that is being looked at. Sexual trauma is very, very real. Yeah, it, it is. It really is. Sexual trauma is very, very real. ED is a problem that a lot of guys face. I believe it was, I think it was a certain percentage, if I'm right, in the U.S. that have ED and 101 other aspects, but it's still stigmatized. So people don't aren't fully open to talking about it. I found these articles and I just found it interesting how it went over concepts of BDSM to try and find out if they're even like if they're hypersexual, if they can find an aspect of sexuality in it. And then in other cases, how sometimes being in a relationship it might be extremely boring to them because that like that sexuality aspect, they might be like, okay, I don't know about this and it might downplay it. Oh, thanks so much for <laughs> for playing the blurt Pelliata, what's up? Don't expect much solidarity from social media. But this is why I bring it up, because oftentimes, especially when, when we've seen, like, Rudius with uh, going to the house with, uh, you know, the, the red light district and everything, it, it it's people were a little like, wait, wait a minute. Do people really, like, can really people go that far for ED? And it's like, bro, imagine not knowing what's wrong with you as a teenager or even now. And let's put it this way. And I'm, I'm going to literally throw this out there for you. Imagine you going to bed with someone that you, you think you're going to get it on. You think everything's going to work and it's not working. What does that do to you? What does that do to your mental health? How would that affect the way that you approach others? And even the way that you like, say that you found another person, would you approach them the same way? Or would it be like, can I even do things right? What would that look like for you? And the more that you put yourself in the mindset, the more that you're like, damn, that's a, that's a major stressor, like a major, major stressor. Um, one issue I heard was that abusive people often claim that they were abused in order to deflect blame and claim sympathy. In, in cases like this, though, like big, big factors of abuse. And this is why, for example, this is not excusing any behavior, but like you always have to take this into consideration. If a child, if you see a child doing hypersexual traits, what should you ask? 
uh, this is this is like an actual therapy question and whatnot. There, yeah, trauma is never an excuse. Your mental health diagnosis is never an excuse. But what should you ask, right? If 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 a kid is being hypersexual, what is a question that you, as a therapist or a psychologist or someone in the mental health field, should ask? How did they learn this behavior? Were they traumatized? Because you know. A lot of times kids mimic by seeing, by be, by doing, by whatever. So whenever witnessing an action like this, it's like, wait a minute, where did this? they pick up this behavior? Is it their environment? Is it the family dynamics? Where did they pick this up? Where were they exposed? Exactly, SFS. And then you go down the line of... Where were their partners? If they like, if they're teenagers, adults, where were their partners? Were they safe? Did they fall in any form of abuse, trauma? And you go down the list from there. But it's important to note that trauma at an early age does affect you growing up, and I think that is really, really key in this series, in everything. Got it, six. Anyways, with that being said. There is cycles of abuse, cycles of trauma, cycles of everything. Ladies and gentlemen, are you guys ready? Sorry, I, I, YouTube, dude, I know some people are like, you like to pause a lot. That's the point of this channel, dude. I'm not just going to sit here and do, like, you know, a bunch of faces. The point is to stop and talk and everything. And to maybe even psychoeducate from time to time. What's up, Kraith? Yo, you just missed the whole topic on, like, uh, sexual trauma and education there. But I, I do want to bring this up. And if you guys want me to do more of this, let me know. Like, if you guys genuinely find resources like this valuable towards, like, the experience of the anime that we're analyzing and watching, please do let me know, ladies and gentlemen. I would sincerely appreciate it. And that is, like, I, I love bringing up, like, resources and, like, stuff that I find like this to showcase why what Rudy is, like, may have gone through, not justifying his actions, but just showcasing how this could affect that, right? More plot houses is equals. It's nice to, to detail into other subjects that others might gloss over. Hey, yo. Also, really quick. I want to say thank you to Reflow. Reflow, let me go get it real quick. You are an absolute legend, my friend. Thank you so much, man. Uh, I really I really can't thank you enough. Like, it, like you literally made me cry that night. Um, so the motherboard came in. Uh, it is absolutely amazing. I know I'm trying to get like more cases, like an actual good case for it and stuff. So that way, like we're all set. So I appreciate, like, I really, really do from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much, Reflow. You're amazing. Uh, for those of you guys that want to help out all the videos on YouTube are unmonetized and so on and so forth. Uh, I do have a throne and I have a, a coffee, coffee, whatever it's called. It means the world to me, especially since I'm good news. I leveled up. I became a manager. I'm not going to say where or nothing, uh, you know, or anything, you know, a big uh, and something, but I'm not going to go into anything. I'm just going to say leveled up, man. Went from from just general supervision to uh, something else. So, hey, <laughs> uh, thank, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. With that being said, are you guys ready? Set. I head wizard. Yeah. Oh, God. Said. All right, let's go. Let let let's let's go, ladies and gentlemen. Let me make sure you guys can hear it. There you go. There you go. All right, let's go. Why is she a cutie though? Hold on. Okay, the reason why I said hold on is looking at this intro, and I know some people are like, dude, there's not that much symbolism, but there really is. You have to think about why they decided to go ahead and showcase what they showcased. Why do I usually stop at the beginnings, especially the very first episode? What did it open up with, ladies and gentlemen? Me one fits. <laughs> what, did, what did the show open up with at the very first time? Like the very first episode of se uh, season two. Ah, uh, thanks, Pick Pika, dude. I appreciate it. Ariel waking up. A rather cold opening. 
if, if we're going to be real about it. It was a rather cold opening. It was quiet. What do we have now? She's not speaking. It's a season of change. It's peace. It's tranquility. That cold openness that was associated with Ariel is not there. It's like an interesting reflection of like maybe a person's mental state or where there are. Another day of school. Just being able to go ahead and wake up and go through this routine. But you're not hearing the cold like... Whoosh, you know, like random noises of like winter falling down. It's like a, it's it's those peaceful days, you know. It's those moments. Uh, yeah, it, it, I know. I know the effects, man. The effects. Uh, the it, it's those moments of peace when you get up. It's those moments of what that what being able to go to and relax is. Thanks so much for the for the prime. Appreciate it, real. So. Even going through this, using using the wand that she got from Rudius, putting the water in, the routineness, the mundaneness that is life, and the peace that comes with it. The spring of life, if you so will. Yeah. I have to ask this just because I'm curious, and I don't mean for it to get derailed right away. If 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 any of you guys know know this, please do let me know. I don't think it'll spoil anything. It shouldn't, unless for some reason me touching on this spoils whatever. Don't answer. It's in regards to like, I guess toiletry or toilet habits in this world. I know I come up with the randomest fucking questions out here, but like. What is the plumbing system like in this world? Is it just an outhouse type scenario? Is it like, what does it look like in this world? Is it indoor plumbing? What does this look like? I know. Because in, in a world like this, probably very chamber pots. Yeah, is it chamber pots? Plumbing? <laughs> so the reason why I asked this is because we're seeing her quite literally use a pot to put water in. For her to be able to go and wash her face and do everything, right? Which for me is maybe has brought up the question, like, what does, you know, plumbing look like in that world, if anything? It's touched on in the novels. <sighs> yes. Oh. I feel like Sylphie, just in the way that she approaches everything, would make a good wife. I feel like if, if her and Rudius ever got together, like, she would be that wife that could handle, like, anything and everything you throw her way, right? Like, it, this is just me bringing this up, right? Like, just seeing the way that, like, she's approaching the day. If you look at the way that others have, like, woken up, Eris, for example... Kid waking up, and even even as they were traveling, yelling, uh, you know, all of that, as as opposed to the way that Sylphie just approaches life. It's like, what does stab stability look like? And even then, I know I asked this question, and I'll ask this question again: Who would genuinely be a ride or die? Who would be a ride or die? I, I'm gonna uh, mods. Can you make this a poll, please? Who do you think would be a ride or die? I have a difference in opinion from this. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I have a difference in opinion on this. I feel like Sophie would make a phenomenal wife, a phenomenal partner to be with individual, very caring, very everything. But I feel like, say that you turned a little bit toxic, you know, Sophie might try and help you. If you turn too toxic, she might be like, all right, that's all on you. Roxy, I feel like, would put up her boundaries. That's just me being me. But I feel like Eris, especially if, if Eris comes back and she knows she's hurt you, she'd be like a ride or die. That's just me. I'm just being straight up about it. Either that or she would leave you. One or the other. <laughs> Zanoba is a ride or die. Hey. <laughs> is a ride or die healthy? It depends. It depends on the actions of that. Like, for example, if it. 
if it's like towards good goals, absolutely. But it, like, wouldn't you want like if you're going down a negative path for someone to call you out on your actions? I feel like Sophie might be the type of individual that tries to help you heal, that is there for you, that gives you that lap pillow if you need it, that gives you a hug at night, that is like, hey, I'm here for you, I'm not going to leave you, that gives you that promise as to, like, who they can be. Just based off of this opening, seeing the way that she approaches this morning, seeing the way that she approaches life in general, it's very caught. Still peak. Uh, yes. Oh. 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 Oh.僕の一日の始まりは魔法都市シャリーヤの街中をもう走れないと思える瞬間まで走り続けることだそうすることで街のチリに詳しくなるし常に自分の限界を知ることもできるこのやり方は誰に教えられたわけではないでもルディが僕
そんな風に一生懸命で前向きな人が好きなんだと思うそれはルディのせいなのかな So, magic in this world, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I know that, like, in case you guys don't know, Zichter has a whole thing going on about, like, magic in this world and whatnot. It is, like, essentially, if you can envision it, you can do it, right? Like, and if you have the mana capacity for it. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, I always know how much time it takes to get there. Sometimes I wake up early. Yeah, no, fair enough. So, what would happen if, if Rudy has decided to start splitting. Say hydrogen atoms、uh, at, a, at a stupid rate. If he just like read it on Wikipedia before he got isekai'd, or he decides, like, <laughs>、uh, it, it's not simple wishing, you need to figure it out. Yeah. So, so this, is, this is why I ask it, right? It's like if it comes down to a scenario like that, like, Can you realistically do something like that, which is essentially just start spilling, like splitting molecules if you have a deeper understanding of the science that goes into like how the magic works? Circle in the. What do you think, Victor? Especially if he's like, if, if he's chantless, like, you know, if he doesn't really need to. Well, I mean, he would have to like understand it, right? Like the theory of it. But I'm kind of wondering if he has to like write it out or say anything or if he could be just be able to go ahead and do it right off the bat. As long as you can imagine it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, he almost did in the Orsted episode. It's interesting. It's interesting. And the more that, the more that this gets highlighted, the more I'm, I'm, I'm curious about the relationship. I'm also kind of dumbfounded at how smart Rudeus is in this world without coming off as smart, right? Like a lot of people might, like, you know, we take Rudeus' journey for granted. But look at this the princess and all these other individuals that are probably smart are looking at this and they're probably like, wait a minute, how the fuck does this work? Oh. こんな道があったのですね。服屋さんに行くなら、ここが近道かと。利便性は悪いですが、しかし風情がありますね。初期の頃に作られた町の名残でしょうね。シャリーヤは他国からの信仰を受けやすいので、複雑に作ったのだそうですよ。おや、うん、ルークは授業を真面目に受けていないと思いましたが、ちゃんと聞いていたのですね。先日デートした子からの受け売りです。I mean, interesting, Paul like. Question. Weird question. And, and, and I'm asking this because for me, it's like these relationship dynamics are solidifying more and more, especially seeing how careful Sylphie is and all of this. This is out of left field. I know it's out of left field. Trust me, YouTube, I know. If Rudy and Sylphie have a kid, does that kid, like, would that kid have green hair or would that kid have white hair? <laughs> yeah, the pedestal is real.、Uh, <laughs> or brown hair, yeah, actually. Sorry, just、uh, the, the aspects.、Uh, we need an SP emo. Oh, God. Mmm. <laughs> ルークは授業を真面目に受けていないと思いましたがちゃんと聞いていたのですねそういえばルディもそうなんだっけやっぱり女の子が好きなんだろうな誰かと結婚したら他の女の子にも手を出すの That's a good question. That is a good question. Is he gonna repeat the same cycle of Paul? <laughs> is he gonna repeat Paul's cycle? Oh, she's thinking about it. No, but like realistically speaking, asking the right question, Sophie. Paul 2.0. Is it nature? Or is it nurture? No, even through that, right? I. 
I'm gonna use my my figurines to 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 clarify this, right? Sylphie, you're asking a really interesting question, right? Would he still chase them if he got married? How about having that conversation with them? That is a conversation worth having, which is, hey, if you got married, would you still chase other people? I would even go further. What would you do if, say, that like you got really wasted one night and someone came on to you? Would you still chase that person? Would you take responsibility if someone just decided to go ahead and like uh, to do an action against you on a, on a drunken night if you were married? What would you do in a situation like that? In the end, we might have urges, but we may... Exactly! And N Ninja, and I think that's a very, very big thing. It's like, we are aware, we are in control of, one, of, of our actions. And even further than that, it goes into... If you can, you can be very specific, Selfie. You, let's go really fucking specific. If Eris came back and you were with me, would you go with Eris? Would you take Eris over me? Who would you value more in, in a situation or relationship like that? If Roxy came back and she's like, hey, I'm your sensei, you know, like, whatever, like, you, you know, would you prefer Roxy over me? Where does this line up? You can control your situation, uh, not to place you in the situation. I, I do, I do also want to state this because I did read a comment literally before I came on here. Sometimes, sometimes when comments pop up in some of the older videos, I look at them and I'm like, hmm, someone was trying to blame Zenith for Paul's actions on Lilia. On, is it Lilia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone was trying to blame Zenith for, for those actions. And I'm like, no, I, I, I like, like, you are, as a grown individual, you have control over your actions. Like, you have control over who you sleep with, you know? Like, yeah, it's like, just because someone is saying, like, no to sex doesn't mean that, like, you know, you, like, you're you're going to be like, oh, man, I, had, I don't know what to do. Like, you know, that's, is it wrong between both of them? Yeah, but, like, you as a partner that didn't know what was going on until it came out that that's not your fault dude you can't control another person's actions or emotions has her issues but she's the closest thing to being an angel in the world but that that's why i highlight it it's like if you like in a situation like this because sometimes we take a lot of self-blame and sometimes it's easier to diverse to pay like diverse uh the problem that may be happening into like others rather than being like hey there were two adults they did what they had to do they fucked up and that was their issue you had nothing to do with that because you weren't aware of what may have been happening there might have been issues in your relationship but that does not excuse paul doing what he did uh there and then that does not excuse what lilia did or so on and so forth if that was just to be a stable relationship or a one-on-one -on -one monogamous relationship you know how many pl anime plots would die if partners just communicated. Yep. Yep. I feel like a majority of them. Good question, Sophie. Oh, Sophie. 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 No. <laughs> oh, it's like she just gave in to it. She's like, ah. I mean, his dad did. To be fair, though, Paul is a Chad. Like, Paul is a giga Chad that, like, apparently walks around and like everyone falls for him or something mm -hmm. Rudy, go. Nanka, Saikin Rudy no koto bakkari kongoete ru no. Boku, Rudy to do nari ta in daro. I wonder. Hey, yo. <laughs> oh. Okay, that's adorable. That is adorable. My heart is dying. Stop. I have to, like, stop myself from screaming. Where is the wand? Wait, 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 wait. Cochino, where did where'd the wand go? <laughs> hey, yo. A coder is up. No, it's cute though. 
I think the way that she views this relationship and the way that she's like, she's weighing everything. Right. And, and I'll ask this for you guys as well in your relationships, especially in, in the person that you've crushed on the hardest for what, what was that like for you? What was that like for you when you were first crushing on this individual, when, you know, your, 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 your doki doki, your kokoro was going doki doki. And you're like, it's like three in the morning and you have school and a little bit. And you're like, oh my God, she just texted lol. Oh, she might be the one, you know, like, how was that like? How was that like when, when the, the individual that you had a big crush on was, was like, you know, you were in constant contact with them. What does that do? Especially if you fall in love or you make a brand new friend and you're constantly messaging one another. What does that look like? Sure wish I had those feels. Let a bot. Because the, the reason why I highlight this is oftentimes, it, it, and I do wonder this, if, if Sophie, if you get together with Rudy, because it, it, it's amazing that we're seeing Sophie's perspective, how she's taken all these lessons and Rudy's on her mind and all of these things. If you and Rudy were together, how much of his past will he tell you? Is he going to tell you everything? Do you think, Sophie, that Rudy is going to be comfortable at a later in a future moment in time to have a confrontation with Eris or to even talk about Eris with you? If Rudyard were to come around one day and be like, hi, I used to travel with Rudy. Do you feel like Rudy might try and keep some things down low? Or would he just be open to talking about all the travels and everything that happened? I'm so curious about what aspects Rudy would want to go ahead and highlight and share if he was in a relationship versus what aspects he just are not talking about that. Don't ask questions. Like, if people were to ask him what happened with Eris, is he just going to be like, we're not talking about it. Like, let's move on. Sorry, this is where my mind goes because I'm looking at this and I'm like, I'm seeing someone that's head over heels for Rudy. Someone that loves Rudy. Rudy's on her mind. She'll probably try and be there for him and do so many things. And I wonder, for Rudy, is this someone, like, if Sylphie helps you heal... Is this someone that's genuinely going to be on your mind and you're going to go ahead and like love and they're going to be your only partner and you're going to elevate them to like the standard that you want? Or are they just like, can they only meet a fraction of the needs that you may needs that you may have or want? Because in this opening, and we're going straight into it. It clearly highlights to the three feathers being together white, right? Being this figure of white that we see in here. I gotta ask this, and I don't mean this in a spoiler way, but is this show a harem? Also, what's up, Pika? <laughs> like, I, I want to go ahead and highlight this without, at, like, j like, without getting a, a genuine answer. Is this show going into a harem route? Great, I hope not. Because the way that this opening has started, the way that everything's been being labeled out, it's as though Rudy needs these different people, these different connections that he's made as a form of healing for himself, as a form of a manifestation of self-heal, self-growth, or self-whatever. What does Rudy... Oh, fuck it, we're doing it. Oh my God, we're doing it. I, I would... Okay, I'll ask this. What route would you guys take? Paul didn't own harem. Let's do this. We're going to start off with uh, the polyvagal theory. Right? Let's take yellow for blue. Right? Let's take, let's take yellow for blue. Let's just flip the coloring here. What does Sophie work with? What does Sophie usually help uh, Rudy be, especially as a kid? What does Sophie help Rudy be? If we're looking at these th at these things, what does Sophie genuinely help 
Hem B. We're, we're looking at this through a polyvagalistic perspective. Official Onion. Yo, what's up? Appreciate it. Official Onion. I like it. Social engagement. If we're going to be realistic, she would be down here. She would literally be green. If we were to talk about it, calmness and connection, feeling grounded, curiosity, feeling openness, feeling this compassion, this feeling in the present. I feel like if we were to put the three girls in an aspect like this, what did what did Roxy help him with? Deal with the anxieties, deal with panic, with fear, with worry and concern that he had as, as a kid, right? Could help him deal with all of these emotions. What did Eris do to him? And it, this is I'm just using the colors of the polyvagal theory as a way of highlighting this. Literally, cause him to shut down feelings of hopelessness, feelings of disassociation, numbness, depression, helplessness. <laughs> but no, realistically, what I'm highlighting through this is in a polyvagalistic perspective, in a polyvagal theory, it says that through like we all go through these cycles daily, a ventral vagal, sympathetic, dorsal vagal uh, system, right? So we go up and down, up and down, up and down this little roller coaster over and over when we encounter a situation. And I wonder if in a way, Rudy needs all three of them to be able to deal with the aspects that life may throw at him. And this is not me endorsing anything in any way, shape or form. I'm going to go ahead and clarify that. This is me genuinely talking about it, like in, in an open way, because what does Sylphie do for him? L let's talk about it, right? And let's flip this around. Also, congratulations on Sylphie winning. What route would you prefer? 46% uh, to Sylphie, 42 to Harem route, 8% to Eris, and 4% to Roxy. Wow. Wow, I thought there would be a lot more Roxy and Joris. Okay, what what needs or what aspects could Sylphie help facilitate? What aspects can Sylphie help facilitate right now? Guys, this is... Uh, probably these three. If we're being honest, probably these three. Love, belonging, safety, and physiological needs. If we're, if we're being realistic, friendship, family, sexual intimacy. What is, what is Sylphie? What is Sylphie to Rudy? Friend, family member, because she was kind of like family as a kid. And then uh, if they end up doing the do later on, maybe so that form of sexual intimacy. She can go ahead and help him out with establishing that safety, the safety settings that he needs in the bottom layers. What can Roxy help with? What has Roxy helped with in the past? Probably the fourth one. Fourth and fifth one, if we're being honest. Help build his self-esteem. Walking him out of his boundaries, right? Uh, literally, like the, the like him not being able to go and take a step out of the gate because it was too scary. Helping him with the self-esteem. Helping him build his confidence. Helping him with the whole aspect of respect, of achievements, of so on and so forth. So then what does Eris help him with? Yeah, Sylphie's literally green. To like for Eris, if we're being if we're being realistic, and for a lot of them, all three of them, self actualization. But going through this, it's like all three of these girls individually, they all fulfill a different need in his hierarchy of needs that it feels as though he himself is just like conceptualized down to a pattern. And it's interesting that even in even in the opening. That's sort of what we get with the three birds. Violence, that's what she helps with.
I recently had a session like that that went something like this, and and it, and it, it hits it, it like just the fact that it's going through this, which is long story short, uh, they had a partner, that partner left them and they were saying that like, you know, because of everything that was going on, because also Nico, thanks so much for the sub uh, and everyone else that subbed. I appreciate it because of everything that's been happening in their life. They really haven't had time. Like, you know, depression, everything comes through and they talk about them falling deeply in love with the mask or with the the image of them that they believed was real. And I was like, ooh. They're like, and all I got at the end was basically like, you know, the, the dust that she left when she left. And it's like, ooh. Hey, Nico, gracias. Ooh, precioso. <laughs> um, and it's like seeing an aspect like this. It's, you know, tracing the literal figment of an idealized version as to what love can be. Let's talk about that. If I were to ask you, what is love to you? What is what does your ideal love look like? Is your is your an ideal love a component of all the re, like aspects of media and relationships and people that you've had in your life of the experiences that like you've interacted with? Is that does that form your framework for an ideal love? Love is like the fairy tales, for better or worse. And this is an actual question. I'm asking it to chat and to you guys on YouTube because this is something not a lot of people get to process and a lot of people in their day don't have the ability to process this. So I'm, I'm going to highlight this right now. Is what, what, what is love for you? Because a lot of people don't get to talk about this. And even looking for this, what is love for Rudeus? You say vulnerability, acceptance, Trying to explain it as comp. No, try your best. Like all the time in the world, intimacy and support, trust, uh, respect in both ways, you know, existing together. I, if Rudy was in front of me, say that Rudy came to a session with uh, Papi Ed, right? I would ask him a question, which is, and, and I'll ask this to you guys as well, and you guys can respond. This ain't therapy. This is just the line of questioning, right? Which is, do you believe that you are unwanted? Or do you have aspects of yourself that are unwanted? And what are those? What are those aspects or those things about yourself that you feel are unwanted? And, and the reason why I would ask this is because that, for me, allows me to start building him up. Because you can start examining the evidence. You say laziness. But does laziness define who you are, Sakusu? What do you mean by laziness? What is the extent of that? I'm not even too sure. Feeling accepted, a commitment to... And, and like, that's really, really interesting. Like, that's why I highlight the, these questions... And, and then comes another one, which is, do you feel that you are enough? Chat, do you feel that you are enough? I would ask Rudy, do you feel that you are enough? Are you enough to be a person's partner? Are you enough for Eris? Do you believe that you were enough for Eris? He would probably say no. Do you believe that you are enough for Roxy? Do you believe that you are enough for Sylphie? Then at this point in time, do you believe that you are enough for yourself? And if not, why not? Tell me a little bit more about that. Why do you not feel like you are enough? What is what 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 goes through that? No, even outside of love, I feel like I could and should do better. But why is that stick figure? Why do you believe why do you feel like you could and should do better and not feel like you are enough? If you're already doing what can, what can be done, what does that mean? So it's aspects like these questions that I'm asking myself as I'm seeing these visuals. Because I'm like, if Rudy is asking himself any form of these questions or has anything like this as a big aspect in his mind, I'm expecting sexual deviancy to appear. As we highlighted in the articles earlier, you know, at the very beginning of stream, 
I'm expecting some weird sexual deviancy to start like a relapse to happen because relapse is normal. Because guess what? When we have these cognitive distortions that weigh on us, what happens when we start taking steps forward? When we're like, dude, we're improving, we're making friends. All of a sudden, we isolate. We're like, oh, no, it takes a lot out of me. I feel drained. I, I can't be there for them. Relapse is normal. Relapse, I, I, I'm going to fucking highlight this over and over. As much as I say trauma is stored in the balls, like trauma is stored in, in like the cells of our body, right? It's everywhere. But relapse is pretty much a part of the growing process. And if you've ever started a habit, you don't just completely change a habit like that. It's very rare for people to do that. You relapse time and time again. And I wonder for Rudy, when is his big relapse going to happen? Anyway, sorry, guys. <laughs> Ah, I just noticed this. I've been low-key going through all the Moshko videos for the past month and so finally caught up. Yeah, welcome on through. Appreciate you, Halo. Guys, drop some Dorito for Halo Alex. Uh, dude, welcome on in. Appreciate you catching up with all the Moshko Tensei videos. Okay, I really wanted to highlight this because I, th I thought this was amazing. Dorito, even for you, Topcorn, for welcome on. Welcome on. Green. Is the color that we see with the desk and the books and what knowledge and you know a home can represent. Yeah. Blue. Uh, what space travel? Uh, literally, like the flowers of love. If we're going to be honest, and all of these beautiful things. What does it divert to again? Red. That is interesting. And this is making me ask a genuine question. Because I feel like this is... Coffee, thanks so much for the sub! Let's go! <laughs> I'm glad being here for the whole year. Let's go. Dude, a whole year! A whole... I'm gonna start crying, bro. I, I never thought I would have this much like love and support from everyone. Guys, like... Thank you. Like, I don't want to fucking tear up and start crying, but thank you for being here. Y'all are amazing. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. So look. Green is more like a home. And that's that's sort of, sort of the aspect that I'm like, I'm looking at and I'm like, wait a minute. Is Sylphie going to be home for him? That home base that he knows he can return to, like, at any point. That even if, if, like, let's say Rudy turns into, like, an older person, right? An oldius. And, like, he's out and about. And, like, you know, he's, like, 50 years old, adventuring Rudius. And he's like, hey, you know what? I got to go back home. And he knows that he can go back home to Sylphie. Is Sylphie a representation of home? And that's where my mind goes into. Yeah, dude. Just I imagine, like, Rudius with, like, a giant beard. Just like, well... Time for me to go to the brothel. <laughs> I don't know why he made him an like you know an old style inspector. <laughs> uh, but no, like that's that's why I'm highlighting uh, these things. Which is, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing a home. I'm seeing like a very like something sturdy, something that you can come back to, something that people fight like spend their entire lives searching to not feel lonely. Like, if I were to ask chat, and you on YouTube as well, how many of you guys feel lonely? How many of you guys are afraid of being alone, of, like, dying alone, of not finding a partner in a genuine way? What does that look like for you? I'll be honest. That was a fear of mine for a good while. Like, not being able to find uh, someone that loved me or people that cared about me or whatever. I'm just going to be straight up about it. You become a lot more accepting as you grow older and whatnot. Uh, and you start to become fine with it. But it, through this, though, a lot of people are still searching for what home is, what home can be. And I love the fact that this is just shadowed in green and, like, really showcases, like, hey, Sylphie might be Rudius's home. 
It might be what allows him to start the healing process. For the blue and the bird traveling, this is actually, this makes me wonder is, is Rudy at, at a later point going to meet Roxy or like going to go on an adventure with Roxy, like just them by themselves or something? Is that how this, like, you know, bird, this bird of love or peace or whatever is going to transpire? Is it going to be, like, just them two or something? I live in the shadows to be the shadow. Or is it going to come out of a situation? Because my thing is, like, that the aspect of travel, the aspect of, of togetherness. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of curious. And of course, the feathers that went away, Eris that's no longer there, Eris that he thought he had, Eris that he thought was there with them was nothing but petals that he caught at the end. Literally her hair that he was left with. Powerful shit, dude. And this is why I do the opening, and I tend to do the opening over and over and over again and again and again, because there's always something you need to catch. Just like when I do a uh, rewatch, which, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a, a Motion Tensei Season 1 rewatch. We're not going super duper in depth the same way that we do on here, but just in case anything catches my eye while I do homework, we're probably going to do it for like the Discord sub people. So that way they are like, you know, Twitch sub people. That way you guys get, get something. Uh, you guys are able to. Uh, be a part of all these rewatches and stuff that we do on there. But going through this, I'm like, man, the symbolism that's in here is, is insane. The symbolism that, that like just pops out of this is, is beautiful. Correct me if I'm wrong. And I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and throw this out there. Do a lot of people skip the opening after the first time? Like, is it to a point where people just, the opening comes along and they're just like, and skip. And we're starting off right after the opening, after they've watched it once or something. I'm not talking about like, like, you know, everyday people. I'm talking about like people that do like analysis or react content for it. I tend to let it play and go grab food. Yeah. yeah Cause I was going to say, I wonder about that. Cause this is, this is like chalked full of symbolism and beauty. And if you're a reactor and you're watching this video, dude, check out the opening. Like, that's all I can say. It's like literally spend time with the opening. Cause I know sometimes we show each other support. I jump into pink cube, their Brady's or, uh, Tia boo or who, whoever else is out there, right? Like SP, Nat, whatever, whoever's video is out there, show some love and support to them. Cause like, there is a fuck ton of actual symbolism in this that is absolutely beautiful uh so yeah this goes out to anyone oh uh, well, oh, fuck it awake productions don't skip the opening dude you know if you're watching if you're watching Bush Tensei, i don't know if you are aren't don't skip the opening or anyone else you know all right guys 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 what's up what's up what's up you guys ready you guys ready i just came back Back from the... All right. <laughs> I wish I could speculate along with Ed spoiler leading questions, but I'm on a... You're a novel read Halo? No. <laughs> Honestly, sometimes... Sometimes I... Because I, people always say, like, dude, like, you know, in the comments, like, you're spoiling yourself in a, in a fucked up way. Sometimes I feel like I am. like, And the thing is, it's not even because I'm... I don't know how to put it. I feel like I'm asking the right questions, though I never know if there's going to be a payoff, right? And, and that's that's sort of like the main aspect of everything is like for shows like this, it's asking questions. That's how we grow. That's how we learn. We literally have to ask questions to evolve. And the more curious that we are, the better that it is, right? Let me back it up. So beautiful and so holy God.
I get the whole bird leading him into. I have a question. I have a question. I have a question. <laughs> uh, is Eris aware of Rudius's accomplishments past the point of separation? I wonder if she's hearing rumors wherever she's at of like, you know, Quagmire or Rudius did this or Rudius did that. And then I wonder how she feels about that. Because for me, it's like a bird that's seeing him go up the stairs and creating these memories, these awesome aspects like this. And like, he just flies away and like, doesn't want to be there. Maybe she doesn't feel worthy or ready yet, even though time has passed. Actively with a smile, asking the right questions again. Eris is barely aware of herself. And even through that comes the next question is, okay, she might have like, I have a saying, right? Which is like, say that she's she's practicing uh, how to fight, fight, right? Okay, cool. You're practicing how to fight. But do you know how to think? Do you know the techniques? I do this with a lot of my fighters, which is they come through and they're like, I want to learn how to fight. And I'm like, okay, cool. You All they do is they come in for sparring rounds. Do do sparring rounds, a hundred, like literally a hundred days worth of just sparring. And all of a sudden they're like, coach, I'm ready to fight you. And they come through and I check their leg, then, you know, straight to the face. And I'm like, but do you have any techniques? Do you know how to set yourself up? Do you know how to go ahead and navigate your opponent around? Do you know, like, you know, the different styles of fighting that there are available to you? It's not just throwing punches or throwing random kicks. It's about, like, for example, do you know about judo, jiu-jitsu, uh, Muay Thai? Do you know a little bit of Krav Maga? Do you know uh, even karate? What do you know? How can you incorporate it in the way that you fight? Because I can throw a punch and I can throw a kick. That's fine. But if I know how to combo things together and go from one to another... That is insane. But where can she learn that? Well, I mean, Ghislaine got her, didn't she? So wherever they're going. Ghislaine and, and Rudyard taught her very well. And she learned the, why they did things. But aren't there people that are stronger than them? I I have a question. Now, now Nick Mayer asked this question. I have another question. Who was Ghislaine's teacher? In particular? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. The sword god? Me, Kraith? Sadly, Rudy can't be there for the Ares training arc. Because that's, sort of, that's sort of what I'm wondering, then. If the sword guard is Ghislaine's teacher, is Ghislaine... It's just, uh, this is my assumption now, and this is a purely, purely assumption based off of this line of questioning. Is Ghislaine taking Eris to go train with the Sword God? And then also, would the Sword God then even think that Eris is ready for something like that? Or would he think like, oh, like, I I'm trying to put myself in a position where it's like, you're bringing me this person because you want me to train them, if that was the case. I would be like, okay, is it due to money? Like, and this is me questioning Ghislaine. Have you gotten soft? Like, what what has happened? Like, like I, I am so beyond curious. I'm so beyond curious. Too below. As a sword king, Ghislaine can only train Eris so far. God, emperor, kings. It seems like the only person. Ooh. Ooh, Eidolon, yo, what's up? It's got an episode or OVA. The, that's why I'm asking these questions. So I'm looking at this bird, and I'm looking at the way that it's seeing Rudius climb up, make all these accomplishments, these memories and whatnot, and, like, even pay attention for him for a fraction of a second, then looks away and flies. <coughs> and it makes me wonder. It really does make me wonder. Are we going to gonna, gonna get a callback to this at some point in the season where... Something big happens, news gets to Eris, something like, 
<coughs> oh, have you heard about Rudius in the Magic Academy? He's doing wonders. He's doing this, this, and that. Like, you know, anyone can, like, go and say hi to him or whatever. Is Would that ever happen? Or even if he's an adventurer, it's like, oh, have you heard of Quagmire or Rudeus? He's doing this, doing that. And would she even feel worthy of approaching? Or would she be like, I can't. I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. Like, oh, oh, oh. And there's chapters. Have you heard about Rudeus? <laughs> sorry, guys. Sorry. I don't mean to... I feel like I always go overboard and I'm shooting in, like shooting in the blank. Like, you know, like I, I don't know what I'm shooting at, but I look at this imagery and I'm like, it's beautiful imagery, you know. I think there's something very primal about this song. I don't know what it is. It's like very nostalgic. Right? Like there there's just something about the way that this song is placed in here that just really just draws you back. Like, I don't know, man. Uh, remember the good times, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's the vocal duet. The blue bird was Roxy's legacy, leading him to his alma mater. Yeah. Yeah. Judy got here for a week. I'm doing a research on Judy. 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 There we go. <laughs> that is so cute. That is so cute. I do wonder though, and I know this was brought up earlier of like, you know, Zenova losing his sibling or whatever. Does he view her as a sibling or as a child, as a daughter? Because I'm like, seeing the way that he gets attached to things. Seeing the way that he attaches to things, and especially giving the name of someone that like you knew. Also, don't. Uh, what's up, Don Kids? How you doing? I've been waiting for this. Because I'm like, you know, giving the giving the name of a family member. There's already an attachment that's being given there, and then someone that can make the thing that you love. Oof! The pedestal work, the attachment work would be like. Bleh. This is Senor Pinguino. He's the best boy. Ah, oh, Senor Pinguino, he's amazing. You know, like, uh, so on and so forth. Like, I, I would try and give anything to Senor Pinguino as long as he keeps doing what I want to go ahead. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, also, guys, please, no spoilers. I don't have time to react to it. Only when, like, I, I literally had to, like, turn over or turn way over here to look at, like, messages because you guys are on separate ends. わけがないと思っているようだな。そう、急人間語も最初から片言でなら理解できていた。ジュリはよく気の利くほどし、人形にしか興味がないと思っていたザノバも彼女の面倒を本当によく見ている。おお。He's <笑> oh, and she's zooming. Oh. So Noba, Daddy, Zanoba. Ah. Honestly, though, sometimes that's that's what it takes, man. And I, I love highlighting this. And I, I, I'm going to take this time to highlight this as well. All it takes is one aspect, man. You... Don't know the amount of influence that you have to shape a kid's world, uh, to shape who they are as individuals and whatnot. I've been, you know, for a lot of my sessions where I'm currently at, I've been having to say my goodbyes, you know, so on and so forth as I transition into this new role at a different company out of whatever, right? And 
the amount of times that I've heard thank you, like you gave me a good like aspect for what a good like father figure should be or what a good male role model should be or you know for, even for the little ones sometimes even hearing like you like it hurts it hurts when the little ones say i wish you were my dad and it's like <laughs> first off no 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 i'm too i'm too young to, to be a parent i want to be a parent just yet but even aspects through that the amount of impact that you have on people is insane it's huge this is brought from Brenner's ecological theory. It is widely popular, regarded for social psychology and psychological aspects as to how we impact others and how they impact us as well. And when we're looking at this, yeah, yeah and that's why, I'll, oh, when we're looking at this, it's why do you, why do you think this is this is important, dude? Why do you think you being a positive role model or being there involved in a person's life, especially as you're growing up, whether it's nieces, nephews, siblings, cousins, whatever they may be, is important? Because you, you are what they look up to to see what an adult is, what life can be like, what a positive what positivity is. And it's it's wild, man. Seeing the fact that Julie has found or like Zenoba is there for her. And it's treating her well, and it's like you know that's everything. Onrai nara kounyu shita dore niwa nigerare nai yoni yakiin, aru iwa tokushu na majutsuin nado hodokosu no ga futsu da ga. Juri wa dore dewa naku, akumade ore no deshi. Soshite Zanoba no imoto deshita. Oh. Son na aru hi, jiken wa okita. Ii ka Juri, jounetsu naku shite taigyo wa naseru. 師匠の人形造形の素晴らしさについて一番弟子であるこのザノバが語って死んぜよ<笑>さて今宵は<笑>でルイジェルド人形だいつ見ても素晴らしい恐ろしさと力強さのこもった戦士<笑> It's a good thing that he like I guess Richard's a good role model and he's not like a creep that goes after kids. So it's a good thing that we're starting off with Richard. <laughs> oh man, like that is so fucking uh, Julie nod. I know the little nod aspect in it. Like, hmm, hmm, she doesn't really grasp the language yet. Paul figure when. この人形造形の最大の特徴は何と言ってもこの佇まいそういえば歴史人形の方はどうしたんですか個人学校おそそそれはシーロン王国に置いてきて嘘だな最大の特徴は何と言ってもこの佇まいそういえば歴史人形の方はどうしたんですか個人学校Sonoba, when I first got here, I saw that the girls were pushing you around. Are you being bullied? Zonoba, when, when I first got here, I saw the way that they were, like, they were just taking you in from one another. Did they, like, did the girls or anyone in general, say even, like, a caregiver, have anything to do with that you got really sweaty really really palmy really everything his glands going full i know i know zanoba panic i'm looking at this because i know i referenced it earlier it's like that's like bullying behavior and seeing the way he instantly just it's either he broke it he was bullied or someone like he just left it and forgot about it which i would doubt because my man was in love with that figurine it's like it's like me with albedo I Albedo. Mommy. Waifu. I love Albedo. I'll protect Albedo, you know. Alba Albedo is great. I know where Albedo is. You know. Something happens to Albedo, you know something's wrong. Chica. I know where Chica is. Chica's wonderful. Chica, you know. I know where my figurines are. Oh my god, Albedo figurine. So this is why I'm highlighting it. It's like you would know where you place stuff, if, even if you had to go away for a bit. So where did this, what happened, Sonoba? Where Albedo goes, I go. So, Wait, what? I, I never said that. I never said that. <laughs> oh, that reaction, brother. 
あるにはあるのですがあるんですか久しぶりに見たいので出してもらっていいですか、oh, no. <笑> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had a feeling. I have a feeling. You know that means a lot to Rudy. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Guys, 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 red alert. Red alert, ladies and gentlemen. Red alert, red alert. It's red alert time here, ladies and gentlemen. If he opens that that up and that's fucking broken, this is red alert time, guys. Why is this red alert? Trigger, trigger warning. Literally crisis moment. This is a this is something valuable for Rudy. Uh, this is this is what we in the mental health field would consider a crisis event, right? Waiting to happen. This is a red alert, guys. Wee woo, wee woo, red alert, red alert. Yeah, this is why I want to go ahead and highlight this because it's like, wait a minute, dude. Like clearly, hold on. Ew. There we go. That's better. Like, if he opens it up and that's broken or that's like teared apart or maybe it's not completely there or whatever, Rudy, you have to prepare yourself. Because clearly, if that's not there, what does this do to you? What what would this do to you? Stay strong, Stanoba. You think the figure is that important to him? I do. Right? I, I, I do believe that figures are important to you because, for example, say that you built a Gundam. Say that you took hours building this Gundam. This Gundam had special meaning to you. This Gundam saved your life when... Say that you you had a you were at your lowest point in your life. That Gundam is literally God for you. What happens if all of a sudden I were to come through and smash that Gundam to pieces in front of you? What would happen to you? What would happen if I got your favorite figurine and I broke it and I just ripped it apart right in front of you and you saw that? Then be fighting words. Yep, 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 yep. What's up, SP? It's a psychotic moment. It's a triggering moment. It's literally a model of the person who saved... Exactly, Nian. Exactly, Nian. <laughs> Turn into Super Saiyan. So that that's why I, I'm saying I'm saying this. This is a triggering. This is a crisis event. A triggering moment for Rudius. And now he has two options here. Number one, be an adult about it and show that he has built enough coping skills in the perfect adult world to be able to move on past an event that shatters his God, shatters the person that saved him, or two, relapse. Because that's what happens. Fight or flight and relapse. What do I think he's going to go with? Fight or flight and relapse. That's what I think. And relapse, I don't mean in just like, oh, like he's going to go ahead and, and do, do stupid stuff. I mean like, as we read the articles, like the uh, peer-reviewed articles at the beginning of stream, it might be something as simple as, like, doing stupid shit. Sexual deviancy, uh, quite literally starting a war, whatever that would mean for Rudius in that regard. <laughs> <laughs> I like that Julie's just trying to sneak in. <laughs> She's like, not my battle, not my problem. Uh, just lurking because I have an exam, but hope stream is going well. Guys, okay, if you guys ever have the opportunity to go visit, go give Leah some love and support. Mods, give her a fucking shout out, please. Incredible fucking streamer. Literally, like, uh, like... A super duper, like, I don't know, I'm always working at in her fucking things, dude. It's amazing. Uh, she's, she's absolutely fucking incredible. I have a little bit of a, of a crush on the way that she plays Genshin Impact and she's able to play so many good games and shit out there. Go send that love and support over to Leah, dude. That's, that's all I could say. So, like, legitimately. But through this, it's like, we're highlighting this, right? Also, mods, if you don't do it, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. Here we go. 
here you go. But got you, got you. There you go. She goes around Rudy. Wow. Wow. And I'll mod check. And then they get mad when I call them out. <laughs> when I'm like, yo. Uh, but anyway. This is. This is really interesting. Anyone interested in some new mod positions? <laughs> uh, but no, it, this is actually really, really interesting. Is who is her safe zone? If if we were to talk about this, who is her safe zone? Uh, I, th this is a real question. It's a Nova, dude. It's a Nova. She could have stood behind Rudius if she felt comfortable enough that Rudius was in the right, that she's gone to Rudius because he, she is like, he is her, her like defense zone or whatever. But she goes over to Zenoba. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Because in this case, for me, it, it just signifies that their relationship has grown to a point where they probably witnessed probably Rudy flying off the handles once or twice before. And this is like, hey, I'm okay. I'm safe here. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm not a wizard. <laughs> I'm not a wizard. Let's start by clearing that off, right? That is just... I, I deal with this a lot. I, when, when I have to go in for, like... No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I, I go... I deal with this a lot, and... And a lot of people, for example, when I go to high schools and I'm there to observe why an individual is doing certain things or whatnot, what do you think often is the case? Just what do you think is often is the case when I go and say I have a high school student who I'm observing because of their reactions or whatever? What do you think often is the case for a lot of their actions your abilities or the way that they're acting or whatever bullying 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 in school or bullying from the like abuse from the home like any type of abuse it's evident and you learn to pick up on signs pretty quickly because you, you know like you have to learn where they're like climbing up where their defense mechanism is uh, where certain things start coming through, and it's it, it, it yeah, yeah. Rudy also, oof. he who manages it all now. Do you think that Rudy is the father of the Dorudia? Oh, no, I'm not sure. 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 I'm not あ、<笑> Relapse. Relapse. Ne never wager something you're not willing to lose. So these girls are from Doldia Village, right? This is the same village that had Rudy naked, uh, and we're trying to go ahead and get him to submit, right? Am I right? Like, for him to get his punishment and everything? I have a feeling he might take this too far. I have a, I have a weird feeling. But aside from that nightmare, why would you take? Why would you make someone be naked, right? 
in a situation like that, especially Rudeus, if we're going through an adventure like this, what does that showcase, right? What would that what would that message leave you with? A power play. Must be a Tuesday. So that enables a power play. That enables quite literally uh, trying to enable concepts of shame, right? If you feel some sort of shame or if you start feeling like you're crossing a line, like, you know, i.e. he was completely bare. He didn't care. My dude was like stretched out naked, showing everything. It's a thing in Doldio Village. They strip them down and douse them with cold water since they're cats and they hate water. And that's the reason behind it. Right. Which is an aspect of shame. So the shame is a very, very... It's probably one of the biggest motivators and one of the biggest reasons why people come to a therapist or psychologist as a core schema. How do I think Rudy is going to approach this in a very similar aspect? He's more than likely going to use a power play mechanic that uses aspects of shame that keeps them literally tied down in a way where he has a power play over them, right? I don't mean like, oh, they're tied down. They're like, oh, no. What I mean is like, they won't be able to speak or maybe move or think, or maybe he's going to have them like in a jail cell the same way that he was, or some type of entrapment is what I'm envisioning for Rudy, just based off of the way that he was treated and based off of what a relapse procedure and what he thinks is normal would be like, right? We're looking at an individual. We're looking yeah, beast in cages, exactly, Corderism. We're looking at an individual who has been building up his coping skill, has had relapses, but right now someone literally destroyed for him. He's, he's in a crisis moment. The aspect of God that helped them. What will he do? Let, let's take that further. I don't delete messages. My hands are up here. It's the mods. Question mods. It's all for spoilers or whatever you guys are posting. Also, hi, Tuculent. Welcome on in. Uh, so what would you do in a situation like that? If we're, if we're being realistic, when all of a sudden, like you might be writing something, you like your favorite figurine, your favorite goddess, whatever is completely destroyed. It was a guess. Chat, chat. What would you do? A lot of you said that there would be fists thrown. Okay. You would probably try and teach them a lesson. This is where I'm scared. Where is Rudy going from this? Where is Rudy going to go with this? And here we go. とんでもない暴挙だ。パソコンをバットで破壊するも同様の所業だ。悪そう。呆れた奴らだ。許してお剣。彼女らにお思い知らせてやりましょう。で。あ、なお。はい、師匠。<笑> シショ。ミニアがもたもたしてるからこんな時間になっちゃったの。なんだもううるさいにゃ。あ。何かようかにゃ。お前ら。ミニア、あいつらやる気みたいなの。Can you smell what Rudius is cooking? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give me a hell yeah. We're about to see Rudius from the top rope coming in here with the steel chair as he goes through and, 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 and bumps the fuck out of them. And boom, there goes Miss Nyarnia. <laughs> I, I smell bullshit. I smell bullshit here. Oh, God. Cooking some black pudding with their... Oh, no. Not from the top rope. <laughs> <laughs> There's some hardcore cooking happening here, ladies and gentlemen. <恥ずかしくないのか>。<笑><笑> いつも何せ群れなければ何もできないと懸念しているのですから。なんだと。てめえ死にりあんま調子こいてんじゃねえぞ。教室の隅で縮こまってりゃ見逃してやったが。うん。あんまりでかい口叩くとぶっ<笑
There's a weird pedestal that can be formed from this, and I'm, I'm, I'm terrified. In psychology, we have a thing called a parataxic distortion or angelification, per, like pedestal work, whatever you want to go ahead and state, state, like whatever's easier for you to go ahead and, and, and take away from that, right? What that means is oftentimes we put people on pedestals. I know we've talked about it with Roxy and with some of them. However, through conflict and through quite literally oftentimes getting your ass beat or being dominated, we go ahead and put people on pedestals as well. For example, how many of you like Dommy Mommies? Why? Well, because they fill a need. <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, you see? Only no, no, no. There's quite there's quite a bit, Top Corn. There's quite a bit. So like that that's the aspect of, of coming through with it. Is like oftentimes, like, you know. A lot of times people fill certain standards, requirements, whatever checklist, if so, that we're going to go ahead and put it, that like it would fit into that category where we're like, oh, okay, that's all of a sudden it's like, oh, this Dami Mommy, like I have her on a pedestal, right? Or the same, same way, right? A lot of people had a thing. I remember one of my previous partners, I never watched Black Butler, but I know that she had a thing for Sebastian, I think. Uh, that was the but That was the butler, right? Like... She was all into him. That was that was her thing. I was like, I, I, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about it, but sure. You know. So it's all up to that. And th th that's why I'm looking at this. I'm like, if this turns into a big fight, into a big moment where you're... Uh, and like, even through martial arts, if you ever get your your ass beat, like, really, really badly, uh, and say that they're in the same school with you or whatnot, guess what? You probably want to fight them more to learn, and you respect the living heck out of them uh, to learn. Like, to learn how to improve yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Bro. Bro. <laughs> Rudy, don't fucking relapse. It's completely normal. I can see it now. This has been brought up like now twice in in, in this aspect. Rudy, do not fucking relapse. Like. Relapse is a normal part of the process. I know, I know, I know. But the concept of shame was just brought up. And now I'm scared that, like, he might... Oh, no. I'm going to shut the fuck up. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared that Rudeus is about to do something stupid. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Right. Let's talk about this a little bit. Look at the weight distribution for him. Flawless fucking form, actually. And, and he used his palm, yeah, to soften it, but at the same time, that would hurt a lot. Especially if, if, if a lot of this came through with this. No matter how hard you put it, like, unless you're hitting sand, it would still hurt. F awesome distribution of weight. Also, why you sh thanks so much for the follow? Like, quite literally, nice hit. Yeah, that would probably send her down or forward. Ah! Nice trip. <laughs> My only thing. My only thing that I like, if I was coaching Rudius, and I hate to put it this way, it, it, it is a nice trip. It, it is a nice leg kick that takes that takes her down. But if he wants to completely dominate her, and like th this is this is actually a move that I do with a lot of my students almost immediately. If they throw a punch and the punch is too slow, you wrap the arm, 
you trip down you, you're, you're still holding the arm and your leg your knee lands right on the on the side of their hip that way if they try anything you can break the arm by simply going up or you put pressure on the side of the rib and you break the rib going down yeah like because because this is a really really nice trip you know like hit and i like that like he did put the uh go for the leg with the most pressure but you know followed of course by by this but but the reason why i'm highlighting this is like it feels like to me that rudy is trying to send the message like it, it's just him letting out his anger and frustration and and everything more so than like i don't know like a full-on like fight fight yeah! <laughs> <laughs> that was a cute one i'm not even gonna lie that was a cute one i'm not even gonna lie ladies and gentlemen that, that was a cute one ah. ah ladies and gentlemen hold on i feel like i need to put this on i need to put this on for rudy i don't even know what the heck's gonna happen but I, I need to put this on for Rudy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I need to put this on for Rudy. <laughs> to think. To think. Yeah. Let's relapse back to the Stone Age. To think my man was over here handling like dragons or wyverns by himself and like going all out and now all he needs is one stone to knock you out. He doesn't even need to try to take out two people. Like the power scale on this is insane. Yes, go. Oh no. Oh, no. I am conflicted. <laughs> I am conflicted. I don't I don't want to say it cuz now I'm scared. <laughs> don't do it, Rudy. Don't have the Oh god. Huh. <laughs> I'm not going to say it, but I do want to uh, uh, No. No. Oh god. Okay. We just Actually, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a fucking minute. Hold on. No, did I take them all down? Fuck. All right, hold on, guys. Hold on. I swear. I swear. I just, we saw this earlier and I just didn't. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I swear we saw this. At the very beginning, we talked about this. So I'm trying to go ahead and. Hold on. I'm pulling it up, guys. I'm pulling it up. Hold on. Ah, not that one. Okay. Where was it at? 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 Also, thanks so much for the follow the killer world. Appreciate it. Sorry, I'm I'm pulling this up, but where is it at? Where is it at? Because there was a study, one of the studies that we had pulled up, where it was literally talking about how BDSM and erectile dysfunction. A lot of people try and cure erectile dysfunction right through moments of bdsm and i know that this sounds weird but it's quite literally like 
men go through a transition period where they try and find aspects for themselves as trying to find what works, especially young teenagers and adolescents, uh, whatnot. Uh, they try and do things that might be sexually deviant, as we had talked about, right? Not not part of the norm or you know, whatever you would consider, uh, to try and go ahead and see if, uh, if Senor Pipi still works, you know? And, and that's why it's like, I, I'm looking at it because I'm like, wait a minute, I know I brought it up, and there's a couple of interesting causes here. Hold on. Uh... No, that's talking about the cures. I don't care about the cures. Where was it at? Where was it at? I can't find it, but when I do, I'll throw it in the YouTube description. It quite literally goes over aspects like this, and I'm looking at this, and I'm like, wait a minute. Is this where this is going to go? They do have aphrodisiac. Mm, 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 mm. All right, I can't find it. It is what it is. It was in one of the three uh, studies that we had brought up earlier. I'll try and find them again at a later point. But yeah, the the demonetized my videos are never monetized, brother. <laughs> Welcome to my world, bro. I don't, I don't monetize my videos. So, what do you don't relapse. No. So, this is twofold. This is twofold in that environment. Right. Number one, we talked about how trauma causes ed how with ed people might try and do sexual deviant acts to try and go ahead and try and feel something but even through this we talked about the concepts of shame that doldia village introduces as punishment i wonder if for rudy this is his mentality of a concept of chain of shame you've been tied up you know this is happening it's not cool I'm not going to say it's, it, it, it's great to see him relapse into this weird aspect of things right but i'm like Hmm. Hmm. He's trying a lot of shit to cure his ED. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also like bad, Rudy. Bad. Uh, but at the same time, when you relapse, are you thinking naturally? When you when you relapse, have you ever thought naturally? In a hundred percent of your senses, even after a fight, even after whatever, what what come what comes next? Isn't this what was done to him in a way? Yeah, concepts of shame. Nah, you got the trauma shades on. You got the whole. Oh, this is this is normal. This is a part of what normal society looks like. He's still pissed about the figure. There's a lot of aspects that come through, and I'm looking at this. I'm like, I can see why. He would try and take a power away from someone, like a power and control thing away from someone. But now I'm, I'm, I'm also like, I can see why people would get mad at this scene, right? However, this does bring up the question, which is, if Subaru were to do this to Rem or Emilia, would people get just as mad? Now I'm kind of, and any isekai protagonist, not just Subaru, any isekai protagonist, I'm kind of curious. The reason that, that I'm saying this is because when it comes to, like, I've seen people try and make the argument that, oh, Rudius should be with a 50-year-old, 80-year-old, 90-year-old. He should not be in university. He should not be doing this. But they closed their eyes at Ellen Elise. Uh, I see people taking someone's like spiritual age per se the soul age rather than the physical age and it's it, it's it, it's interesting because like the brain is not fully developed we can go into 101 of the, like the neuropsychology and cognitive psychology aspects of someone growing up and and how that would affect them but a lot of people attribute rudius to Earthius, and all they see when they see rudius is they see the people and, and i hate to put it this way I, i'm just gonna call it how it is 
if you make fun of Rudius for his ED, if you literally sit there and you like, you're not trying to go ahead and understand maybe what the show's going on about you. You can dislike a show that's a okay. You can put your show in any ranking order that's a okay. But if you're just constantly bringing negativity in, are you no better than the bullies that bullied Earthius? Are you literally in the side of those individuals that had him tied up, that would make fun of him, that would poke at him for being ugly, for being uh, fat, for being whatever, for having a tiny wee-wee when, when, when he was in Earth? Rather than taking the time to, like, you know, be there and trying to understand, okay, what's going on, whatever, right? Because I've always talked about the impact that we can have on people, and this is one of those moments. This is one of one of those situations, one of those cases, right? Where it's like disliking the show is a okay, exactly stick figures, but calling people's names and, and shunning people and calling people that like a show disgusting is not okay. That is not okay. Because what you're doing is you're sticking a label on people, and in in a fucked up way, you're you're literally being a bully by doing that. I wonder if people make fun of Rudy in the show. It hurts people going through that IRL. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, th this is why I highlight it because I see it from time to time. I see people like be very spiteful and negative and nasty uh, towards people who like Moshko Tensei or people who are like, oh, here we go. People trying to defend his actions. I'll state this. I'm never trying to defend someone's actions at all, ever. I always state this. Even with Paul, whom I got completely wrong, I, I will always state, like, I'm never going to try and justify an action. That's not what I'm here for. It's to analyze how these actions come to be and how people follow through with these actions, why these actions happen. Never a justification of, of actions. However, it's interesting that people go on the defense mode about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> やはりダメか。師匠、そのような方向で罰を与えるのですか？いえ、ちょっとした実験です。さて、あなた方どうしてこうなっているか。But also, dude, doing it in front of Julie is not cool, man. That and that I will say, like, bro. Okay, doing it in front of Julie, like, you could have put Julie in another room, my brother. Like, if I'm gonna bring up an aspect that I actually have an issue with, like, aside from that, like, you know, from what happened right there and then, it's also like, you know, you could have put Julie in another room, uh, because children grow up and they capture things and they're very, very respondent with all of that, ladies and gentlemen. And that, that's just me throwing this out there. Like, kids will pick up on information just like that. She must be... Hola, como estas, Jesus? Julia has also been helping. She... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My dude's like a big... I'm backing it up. I know, I know. It's muted. I can tell by the rate of chat. Hold on. Here we go. ほう、何もしていない。それをやったのはあなた方ですね。この気持ち悪い人形が何なの? Don't tell me you're gonna fucking show her the underwear, bro. Brother. <laughs> no! No! <laughs> I built a shrine for this. Look at what you destroyed. You destroyed my love. You destroyed my passion. You destroyed my holy relics. <laughs> その人形は我が神の恩姿です。あなた方はそれをバラバラに壊したのです。Julie <laughs> 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 just fucking crying in the background. Oh my fucking god, dude. They sell this well. <laughs> they sell this well. Just Julian behind Sonoma just crying like, hey. Hey, 
Dude, what a way to lead this up, though. Need to clip their faces right here. What a way to sell this up and literally bring this up and bring up the power as to what it means to be in, in this paratactical moment, right? Um, where quite literally, it's like, okay, yeah, I had... I'm not going to use Chica. That's going to be a really bad example, and I'm going to get canceled. Albedo's underwear. You destroyed my figure of Albedo, but you see this? This is this is proof that the Holy Goddess does exist. This is proof that the Holy Goddess does exist. You know, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, God, what did you get involved with? So, is there any more time? No! あ、面白そうだ。気持ち悪いから言いなげって言ったのはプレセナギャ。でも踏んだのはリニアなの。足が滑ったのギャ。それにプレセナだって最後に蹴飛ばしてバラバラにしたギャ。シャイフォットスレ
it, not like that is not it still does it okay <laughs> fits yeah if the fit yeah oof oof fits is just one of the lads isn't he uh, Sylphie is simping way too hard now. Yeah, I mean, Sylphie is like wearing rose-colored glasses where even the red flags are like any other flag, right? But that happens. And honestly, as a teenager and as a young adult, you like, and even most adults, you tend to ignore the red flags of the people that you like. And even if in any other situation would have been like, that's fucking gross. If it's someone that you like, you're literally just like, okay. Like, I guess, like, oh, no, they didn't mean it like that. They said they didn't do it like that. But if somebody else would have said the exact same thing, how would have you have taken it? Yeah. More like black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has no toast blood. Yeah. Tomore,フィッツ先輩には、また知恵を貸していただきたいんです。こちらの気が晴れ、かつ恨まれず、しかし復讐されない程度には分からせるような押し置き。何かありませんか難しい質問だね。うーん。よし。僕にいい考えがある。おう。そのセリフは死亡フラグだから、あまり言わない方がいいと思うが。まあいい。あ、ああ。お、ブロー。ハウロングハブユハッドベンデー。何をするといいにゃ。でも、部
This is a parataxic distortion. This is a parataxic distortion already forming. This is ooh. This is a, a extreme cuz what happens since he is boss now. He he's he's not he's not a uh, boss man. You know, it's not Papa Franco time. But like he is quite literally like boss, right? He he he's he's all the way up here. What happens if someone tries to date them? Now I'm curious. I'm I'm throwing this out there out to you guys. What happens if someone tries to come over and start like date them or something? Are they open to date whoever or are they going to be like, "Hey, you have to talk to our boss." They have to go through boss. That's that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, more than likely, it's going to be like, oh, yeah, you're going to have to talk to boss about that. Sorry. Boss decides everything. We we gave him pretty much everything. Sorry. You know? Ed, Ed shut up. Wait, what do you mean, SP? <laughs> Our boss. That's a good question. SP, this is all you, man. He's the pack leader of them now. He beat them fair and square. We have another word for those bosses. No, because I'm thinking about this, and I'm like, this is what parataxic distortions can form, like extremely toxic parataxic distortions, and especially cultural uh, formations that come through, like shame, concepts of shame, uh, will form into some like weird attachments, some weird habits like this. Also, how you doing, SP? ちょっと反省が足りないね。フィッツ。お前は関係ないやろ。そうなの。ヌーニなの。お。二人とも<笑><笑><笑> You guys never answer this, but now I'm really curious. Do demi humans go into heat? You guys always avoid a answering this question, but do they go into heat? Because now I have my, my mind swirling with this with this parataxic distortion. Okay, yes. You asked this, Ed. Shut up. <laughs> oh, no. Because if it, if they do, I'm seeing something set up, and I hope that I'm, what I'm seeing is correct. Because now I'm scared. That That is a great question. Espera el domingo. Hasta el domingo. Uh, the horny answer is almost, yeah, it's almost more certainly the correct one. If Rudeus was killed, Oh, shit. ヒッツ先輩もエグいね。明日は ギレーヌ<笑><笑><笑> The fact that they just jump out of like a two-story window, bro. Just casually drop, yeah, dr casually dropping a Sword King, and then them just casually dropping out of a two-story. <laughs> like, yeah. Oof. Oof. Cats always land on their feet. Sorry,ルーデウス君。調子に乗っちゃって。いえ、それより特殊な映像と言いましたが、もし知ってる人がいたら。彼女ら困るんじゃないですか？え？ああ、うん。あれは嘘だから。え？あれはただの魔法陣用の安い塗料だよ。魔力流せば消えるやつ。ね、ずっと気になってたんだけど、あれは何？ああ、我が宗派の
<laughs> no, 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 it's not true. No, <laughs> no, oh no, bro. Oh, that's like the first time. Like, oh, oh man, that's like the first time my partner came in and saw one of my figurines. And I, th I thought she was about to be like, I had a partner that was like really against figurines and like anime and whatnot. And I thought that they were just going to be like, you know, like all the other ones were act out, oh, whatever, I'm whatever. They were like, Ooh, can I like, I've seen another one. Can I get it for you? I, I found it here. And I was like, Oh, yo, you're cool. You're fucking cool. But like, dude, dude, a brother he's been praying to it every day since he was five yeah but for him it's like he's sharing this cool thing with the bro and this bro is selfie so okay we're good ちょっと寝転んでみてもいい。どうぞ。いい枕だね。横になっても <laughs> No, it's gonna be a debate. It's gonna be a debate. No way. <laughs> my mind is telling me no, but my body, my body is telling me. <laughs> Do it, you coward. Day ruined top 10 anime betrayals. Holy shit, brother. Oh no. Oh no. Nantene? Warikedo. Ariel Sama no mere dene. I thought we were bros though. Like, why do you think Fitz is hesitating? Because I'm wondering for Fitz herself, it's, it's scary. Because what if you reveal yourself and he's like, whatever about it? What if you, what if Fitz revealed herself as Sophie and he's like, oh, cool. What if he, he's not like super, like, what if her expectations that she has with Rudius doesn't come into fruition? What if all of these things that like scenarios that she's imagined, uh, like whatnot, and she gets rejected? It's a big fear, dude. Like at that point, like the point that she takes this off, she's at her most vulnerable. I know Rudius has just been being Rudius, but for herself, this has allowed her to get close to Rudy in a way that she wouldn't have been able to get to, like, in, in knowing the side of him but while just being Sylphy. Because she's seen stuff that I'm pretty sure he would try and hide if, if, if she was Sylphy, you know? So that's what makes it interesting. You look familiar. Have I met you before? The fear of being forgotten, the fear of rejection, the fear of not being, yeah, not being wanted, everything. Being rejected sucks. You don't uh, feel sad at first. You just feel off like the whole world rotated 10 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. And it, well, for me, it sucked, dude. Like for me, it felt like when I, when I was like, you know, rejected, it felt like, damn, dude, I really thought that like we were this close, but clearly we weren't. And that it can shake someone. It can fundamentally shake someone. そう言ってもらえると助かるよ。じゃ、じゃあ、そろそろアリエル様のところに行かないと。はい、ありがとうございました。どういたしまして。じゃあね、ルーデス君。ああ。ああ。もし、あのままフィッツ先輩の顔を
honestly, like, really awesome to see the fact that he still is able to go ahead and, like, he, he didn't push it. He he lost his composure with the whole losing his statue, whatnot. We can talk about relapse in that way, right? But when it came to something like a serious matter, like especially if someone being vulnerable and revealing themselves in that regard, he didn't push it. Interesting. Interesting. His pointing ain't turning, and that's for sure. He thought, but he didn't. Exactly, exactly. My my big thing through this episode is I thought it was gonna be controversial. Where was where was the controversy? Oh, Booba. Booba was a controversy. I feel like these people, like... What what did he do to Sylphie in the... the in the kidnapping? And, okay, let's talk about this. Right. Anime that do that. How many isekai anime do that? How many ecchi harem isekai anime do that? Probably like a majority of them. Uh, <laughs> how many isekai anime do you have to do certain things like that? Uh, we, we don't even have to go to go that far. Just anime in general. Right. So then what makes this different? Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at this and I'm like, I'm seeing someone that relapsed and that was clearly acting in his emotion brain. His trauma brain was activated. He had trauma filter on. And he even realizes it afterwards. Like, wait a minute, what the fuck am I doing? Like, I could just make this out of clay. Like, I don't need to take it this far, right? It's coming from the last episode drama. This anime tried to make the audience uncomfortable instead of normalizing it like other anime. At least that is my theory. And if they did, that's good. That, that That's good. Because looking at this, I'm like, okay, I can see a person like following through with because of trauma brain, because of an emotional based uh, brain, that like they would take an action too far and then realize, what the fuck am I doing? Because that's sort of what he realizes. is like, I could just make this. And he goes and he talks to people, calms down, and is able to go ahead and come back and fix stuff. Want to attribute Rudius to anything else but Perv? Probably. Probably. And I, I can definitely see that. Overall, though, this episode was good. I feel like it's setting something up, though. Rudy isn't a heroic insert. No, and he shouldn't be. I think I think if a if if a show you start off as like a broken and like OP pro tag as a self-insert, that, that can be pretty rough, dude. That can be pretty rough. People is mad with Rudy is all they do because he was ugly. I, I, I can kind of see that, actually, Nico. I can definitely kind of see that. Rudy is a growth redemption insert. People, I feel like people take the word redemption and think that, like, he's going to change 100%. No. Or or even, like, uh, the whole concept of growth, that he's going to grow 100%. No. Even in therapy, you will not get 100% growth. Why would you? <sighs> yeah, the animation was pretty good. Like, I feel like this is a story of change. I feel like this is the story of someone trying to find his way through life and finding aspects of change in himself. Is he going to change 100%? No. But is he going to find things to change? Like, about? Sure. Absolutely. That's why I'm like, this is a banger of a fucking show. Well, more redemption is more like somebody takes back what they did that's bad. Other reincarnation stories separate you from the mental image of the previous life. Yeah. You only get that 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 aspect, you know? People expect him to change within a couple of episodes on a straight lineup. I mean, okay, imagine this. If Rudius had the ability, if Rudius, Rudius had Subaru's ability to come back every single time, like, say that he would die and he'd come back, would he still be the same Rudius? Like, in a realistic setting, like, even, even for Subaru, it takes him forever to heal. At least in the anime, right? He has to go through a shit ton of loops to be able to start the healing process and find out find out how to grow. So why do we expect a character who doesn't have that ability to literally grow from one episode to another and be completely healed? Rudius does not have the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The loop itself is a traumatic process, yeah? But it could also be a healing process in of itself. 
Rudy would min max the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. People really hated ReZero at first, though. The hate doesn't just, does, yeah. The hate ReZero controversy is just old and boring now because of Subaru. Other isekai or escapism, that is not, yeah. There's, there's a lot of good arguments to be made, especially about Moshiko Tensei, especially about everything around. Like, I, I'm just happy that we, we were able to go ahead and watch this and go through it. Hold on. Ah oh, man, this song. Guys. Feels time. So cute, man. Man, I have a feeling. I have a strong feeling like they're going to become each other's home. I have such a strong feeling that that's, that's what's going to happen. Liar. The fiancé of despair. What? What? The fiancé of despair. Wait, who's the fi Wait, who's the fiance? Hold on. I I am confusion. Bwahaha. What? Next episode. <laughs> Who's friends? You'll see next weekend. Tal vez una chica. Beyonce of this. Beyonce. Beyonce. No, I don't. I don't fucking know. I don't fucking know. <laughs> so my question now is that Roxy is on such a high pedestal. What happens when Rudy eventually meets Roxy again? Would it? Have, I think it will. I'm actually kind of scared. See, Cal, I'm kind of scared that because Rudy is building this pedestal higher and higher and higher, that Roxy, maybe even unknowingly, might overstep a boundary and Rudy is going to be okay with it. Like, what would happen if, for example, this is this is a general, genuine question. I'm going to throw out this for you. There, there, there this for you guys. We, we've already seen Rudy, like, showcase everyone, like, the underwear and whatnot. What would happen if Roxy... I don't know, overstepped a couple of boundaries with, with Rudius. How do you how would Rudy react? Especially with like with Sylphie being nearby and whatnot. Like, do you think like number one, would he be would he tell Sylphie, hey, Roxy overcrossed a couple of boundaries? Or would he be like, hey, you know what? Like, Roxy, it's my fault. I'm the one who let my boundaries be stepped on. I'm here for you. You're my goddess. You're my queen, babies. I'm here for you. Or like, what would that look like? That's what I want to highlight. Like, he's already built such a high enough, like, pedestal that I'm scared that, like, if Roxy says one bad thing to him, his self-esteem is going to crumble. If Roxy, for whatever reason, decides to, like, do something shady, uh, like, you know, shady in this relationship against Sophie, you know, if they have a relationship, Rudy might just go along with it. That's why I'm like, hmm. Would Rudy think of boundaries for Roxy? Like, she has a right to step over my... Well, that's a question, Eidolon. Would you have boundaries for your goddess? 
Do you see what that possibility with their character? No and yes. Depending on who she's with, XRC. I think, like, if, if she hangs around the wrong group of people, she might get some weird ideas and accidentally overstep. If she's, like, just around good people and she doesn't change or whatever, I think maybe she might be, like, it's wrong or something along those lines. What would that even look like? I can't imagine over Roxy overstepping anything asexual, uh, maybe asking for too big of a favor. Could be. Literally, it could be. It could be just Roxy asking for too big of a favor, uh, asking for Rudius to do too many things or join on adventures or so on and so forth. But ladies and gentlemen, the bear, Roxy also does hold on a pedestal herself, so I don't think she'll come off too strong. Brothers, brothers, brothers. Showdown, I appreciate you a ton. You're an absolute fucking goat, dude. Guys, thank you guys so so much for coming in YouTube. I hope you you liked it, dude. All of this is completely like free, like it's unmonetized on YouTube for a reason. Uh, all of this is for mental health purposes to help like people grow and love and so on and so forth. I don't I don't even know how much I, to appreciate it. Like, it means the world to me to have you guys come over on Twitch, watch it live, have this discussion, this live interaction. I'm sorry I missed it. That storm completely and utterly wiped out my internet for for a whole a whole day there. It, it was quite rough. I'm not gonna lie. It was quite rough, man. So that's why that's why I wanted to go ahead and highlight that, guys. Like it, it was, it, it's a journey, and it's, it's I'm I'm just glad to be here with you guys, and I'm glad that you guys are an absolute joy.